student i welcome to i welcome you to this yet another good uh, unit that is unit 16 where we are going to look at the uh, jesus miracles over nature jesus miracles over nature last time we are looking at the crossing of the river jordan and the uh, the defeat of the fall of jericho how the Israelites crossed the river Jordan and how they also defeated or conquered the river, uh, the city of Jericho. So today on Jesus miracles, it's another good thing because we are going to look at Jesus power over nature. He portrayed, he showed that he had power over nature. So how did he show that? So let us be together in this uh, lesson. So first, we're going to look at the miracle of coming the storm, the miracle of coming the storm. So here uh, we see that in on Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, verse 32, these 10 verses, these verses, they talk about Jesus' miracles. So pause first and read the verse read the verses so go through the verses go through them see and understand now uh even before we proceed therefore let us also uh see let us watch this small clip and see how jesus calmed the storm one day jesus got into a boat with his disciples and said to them let us go across to the other side of the lake And as they were sailing, he fell asleep. Where is your faith? I hope we have enjoyed that one, that small clip, uh, that small video that we have looked at Jesus coming the storm. So Jesus performed these miracles either out of compassion or on request. Remember, we also talked about the miracles of Jesus previously. And we also said that Jesus uh, performed the miracles sometimes out of request. Sometimes it was out of, uh, out of passion or compassion. He felt mercy on someone. Then he had uh, to assist that one uh, or to do or to perform that miracle. So Jesus used miracles as a means of spreading God's message to the people. So why did Jesus use miracles? Number one, we are saying that he used the miracles. He used the miracles as a means of spreading God's message to the people. So it was a way of spreading God's message. The miracles, they were like a way of spreading God's message to say, yes, 
God is powerful over everything. When the disciples were sailing on the sea of Galilee, they saw Jesus walking on water. So they also see uh, they saw Jesus walking on water. Jesus was walking on water, on water, and they were surprised to see some someone is walking on water. Now these disciples, uh, they thought Jesus was a ghost. The disciples thought Jesus was a ghost. So when it was at night, they were sitting on the boat. Then they saw uh, someone walking on water. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Can be nice, really nice, walking on top of water. So they were surprised. Said, "Look at the ghost! Look at the ghost!" So they were. They thought that Jesus was the ghost. Now the fact that Jesus walked on water. Uh, clearly shows that he had some power over nature. So here, it is a miracle. Jesus walking on water is a miracle. It shows that Jesus has power. He had power over nature. You cannot walk on water. You cannot walk on water. No, you will drown. But Jesus walked. It means he defied those powers of nature. So he had power over nature. Then there was a heavy storm on the sea. So he went onto the boat. Then later on, there was another storm. There was this storm on the sea. So we have seen on that one how Jesus came to the, uh, the storm. The disciples were afraid because they lacked faith. So the disciples did not have much faith. So they were afraid to say we are going to drown because when if you have seen the lake how it does when they they are they they are, there is a storm there you see that no one goes there not even a boat because they are the waves bigger waves they are one after the other the waves one after the other so uh, the disciples this time they were also afraid we are going to die why were they uh, afraid because they did not have faith even in Jesus to say we have someone here who has got power over nature they did not think about that Jesus commanded the storm to stop then while they were there then Jesus uh, said uh, stop calm or the storm stop calm down then immediately the lake was Quiet. When the storm calmed down, the uh, those who were present declared that truly Jesus was the Son of God because even the winds obeyed him. So we see here that those who were with Jesus, they even agreed to say, yes, this is the Son of God because even the wind, the storm can listen to him. It took no time. He just said, calm down. Then it was quite as if uh, the, the storm or the lake had ears to hear someone speaking. Just say, calm down. Then it was quiet. Then they said, yes, Jesus, you are really the son of God. Because even the wind can listen to him. Another miracle. Uh, that we see Jesus performing is turning water into wine. When we read John chapter 2, verse 1 up to verse 11, John chapter 2, verse 1 up to verse 11, there we are going to see another miracle whereby Jesus turned water into wine. Now, let us watch this one again. Let us watch this small clip and see what happened there. Uh, 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 on that miracle. When evening came, Jesus' disciples went down to the lake, got into a boat, and went back across the lake towards Capernaum. Night came on, and Jesus still had not come to them. By then, a strong wind was blowing and stirring up the water.
the disciples had rowed about three or four miles when they saw Jesus walking on the water. reached land at the place they were heading for. Next day, the crowd which had stayed on the other side of the lake realized that there had only been one boat there. They knew that Jesus had not gone in it with his disciples, but that they had left without him. Other boats, which were from Tiberias, came to shore near the place where the crowd had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they got into those boats and went to Capernaum, looking for him. I hope you have uh, seen how uh, that thing or that miracle happened. Now, let us continue turning water into wine. John chapter to verse 1 through verse 11. Read this passage again in the Bible. Jesus attended a wedding in Cana. So there was a, a wedding somewhere at a place known as Cana. So during the celebrations, they discovered that they had run out of wine. So as people were dancing, were celebrating, but they discovered that wine is gone. They ran out of wine, no drinks. Jesus told them to fill the jars with water. Then Jesus said, oh, you ran out of wine, all right? Fill these jars with water. So there were some buckets there, bigger buckets. He said, fill them with water. Maybe others were doubting to say, what are you telling us now? Are we now going to drink only water here? The water eventually turned into wine. The water eventually turned into wine. So what happened was that Jesus there, uh, he told the master of ceremony to say, okay, they have filled these jars with the water, all right? You, the master of ceremony, can you now test, uh, test this water? Then when he tested, he was so surprised to say, you people, he, uh, so he was against the owner of uh, that wedding to say, you, where was this, this good wine? Uh, you had hidden the good wine and gave us that bad wine before. So that water turned into a good wine. It became a very good wine. Two days later, there was a wedding in the town of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine had given out, Jesus' mother said to him, They are out of wine. Madam. What do you have to do with this? 
My time has not yet come. Do whatever he tells you. The Jews have rules about ritual washing, and for this purpose, six stone water jars were there, each one large enough to hold between 20 and 30 gallons. Fill these jars with water. They filled them to the brim. Now draw some water out and take it to the man in charge of the feast. took him the water, which now had turned into wine, and he tasted it. He did not know where this wine had come from, but of course the servants who had drawn out the water knew. So he called the bridegroom. Everyone else serves the best wine first, and after the guests have drunk a lot, he serves the ordinary wine. But you have kept the best wine until now. Jesus performed this first miracle in Cana in Galilee. There he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, Jesus and his mother, brothers and disciples, went to Capernaum and stayed there a few days. So this showed that Jesus had power over nature. So this showed that Jesus had power over nature. So again, he turned the same water into wine. So he showed again to say he had power over nature. Water is natural. He turned that nature, that nature of water into wine. It shows that Jesus had power over nature. Now, we have also looked at this uh, uh, this unit, whereby we are looking at Jesus' miracles over nature. We have seen how he came to the storm. We have seen uh, him, uh, how also he walked on water, how he walked on water, and also how he turned water into wine. All these miracles, they show or they tell us that Jesus had power over nature. Now, before you go to the next unit, here with me is an exercise. Number one, why did Jesus use miracles? Why did Jesus use miracles? Number two, what did the disciples think when they saw Jesus walking on water? What did the disciples think when they saw Jesus walking on water? Number three, Mention three things that happened at the wedding in Cana. Mention three things that happened in the wedding in Cana. So, in other words, question number three, it is telling you to narrate. Narrate what happened. Narrate what happened uh, when Jesus was in Cana. So, say what happened there. So next time we are proceeding with the unit 17, unit 17, and on unit 17, we're going to look at Jesus' miracles over death, Jesus' miracles over death. So this one again is another good unit whereby you're going to enjoy this unit again, and it is really good because we are still looking at the miracles of Jesus. So be there next time. And until next time, take care.